pleased to uh, uh, introduce a special guest, so Scott Aronson from the University of Texas at Austin. So uh, Scott is a, uh, he was a recipient of the Waterman Prize and, uh, and a Simons investigator. He's a leading researcher in, in uh, quantum uh, computation, and uh, he's very kindly agreed to come and give us a talk on the subject, which seemed appropriate for our, our general interests. Okay. All right, well, uh, thank you, Rafe, uh, and uh, thank you for uh, inviting me to uh, my first, uh, uh, I guess, PCMI in, in Park City, uh, surely not the last. Uh, so uh, I, I did tell the organizers when they invited me that I have no particular expertise in uh, QFT or you know bundles or categories or three manifolds or really any dimension of manifold. Uh, I'm, a you know, I'm a theoretical computer scientist, and they said, that's okay. Uh, you know, we just want your s usual quantum computing talk with with uh, with the jokes. Uh, so, okay, so I said, uh, all right, well, well, you know, what's what's the level of the audience? And they were like, oh, well, it's everything from you know high school teachers to uh, active researchers in quantum field theory. So I said, okay, I think I got that. Uh, so, um, all right, so uh, so let's let's see what we can do. So this here is uh, what you get if you do a Google image search for quantum computer. Uh, that's uh, uh, well. It's one of the first things that c c comes up. So I am, you know, very far on the theoretical end of this field. I don't actually build them, but even I am pretty sure that that's not what they look like. Uh, but you know, we'll be less interested in what they look like than in uh, uh, what they can and can't do. So, uh, so in order to uh, uh, and 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 uh, what are the uh, connections to uh, uh, many different issues in physics? Okay. So in order to start talking about that, I first have to sort of explain explain the basic concepts of theoretical computer science. So I have three slides to do that. That should, you know, I mean, you know, you're, 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 you guys are all studying way more advanced stuff. This should, this should, this, this should not be so bad, okay? So, um, okay, so what we mean by a problem in computer science is like an infinite set of questions. Okay, like given an integer, is it prime or composite? You know, given uh, a, uh, a list of you know locations of stars, you know, can you uh, uh, reach all of the stars? You know, by only moving your telescope this much. You may recognize that as an example of a famous problem called the traveling salesman or so salesperson problem. Okay, so um, uh, and then you know uh, any specific. Uh, 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 number that I give you to say test its primality or, uh, uh, or, or not that I give you to compute its crossing number or you know manifold uh, to uh, compute its homology groups or whatever. So uh, you know anything like that uh, uh, is, is going to be an instance of the general problem. Okay, and uh, so you know the, we typically uh, we measure the size of an instance. Uh, you know, in, in uh, for example, by just how many bits it would take to specify it, and then you know we're interested in first of all what problems are computable. You know, for which problems is there a general algorithm that will solve any instance and terminate in a finite amount of time? You know, and that can already be a very very uh, difficult question. For example. Uh, uh, um, you know, it's known that it's decidable whether any two knots are isomorphic. Okay, that's a very non-trivial result. Okay, but uh, 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 in computer science for the last uh, uh, half century or so, we've wanted to do much better than that and say, you know, which problems actually have efficient algorithms? Okay, and roughly what we mean is algorithms that are much, much better than uh, the doofus brute force approach of just trying every possible solution one by one until you find one that works, right? Which is a solution that, as the instance size gets larger, will rapidly, uh, you know, take uh, much longer than the age of the universe. Okay, even even if it's uh, technically computable. Okay, so uh, so our our. Uh, Rough and ready criterion is we want algorithms that are polynomial time, meaning that they use a number of 
elementary steps that grows at most like n, the size of the instance, uh, raised to some fixed power, or most as a polynomial in n. Okay, uh, obviously n to the 10,000 is not very efficient in practice. Uh, you know, 1.0000001 to the n would be much better in practice, even though it's formally exponential. Okay, but you know, this is uh, uh, sort of the first uh, maybe question you could ask, just what is the asymptotic behavior? And it's usually, though not always, pretty well correlated with uh, is, is your problem uh, tractable in practice? Okay, so then, um, you know, we, uh, we sort of uh, have a universe of uh, classes of problems that are solvable with different resources, and uh, the main, you know, one of the main tasks of theoretical computer science is to understand these different classes and how they relate to each other. Okay, so the uh, most basic of all the classes is called P, uh, polynomial time, and it's just the class of all of the problems, for simplicity, say decision problems, uh, that have polynomial time algorithms, you know, on a standard deterministic digital computer like the one in your pocket. Okay, uh, then the next uh, famous class is called NP, uh, non-deterministic polynomial time. Uh, you know, and, and, and the physicists, you know, have better names for things, you know, Big Bang, Black Hole, you know, we're stuck with uh, non-deterministic polynomial time and so forth, although, you know, compared to SO3 and so forth, I think these, are, these names are just fine. Uh, so. Uh, so, uh, so, so, so NP uh, contains all of the problems where if the answer is yes, then there is a short proof that it's yes that can be efficiently checked. Okay, that can be checked by a polynomial time algorithm. Okay, and a famous example is factoring. So uh, uh, to phrase factoring as a decision problem, I could say, for example, I give you a positive integer, like say that one, and I ask uh, some yes or no question, like does it have a factor ending in seven? Uh, in this case, I believe the answer is yes. Uh, if, uh, uh, if any of you want to check that in your head, uh, if, you know, if I made a mistake, uh, uh, you're welcome to do that. Uh, but um, uh, in any case, uh, you know, the point I want to make is we, we do not today know an efficient algorithm, at least for a classical computer, uh, to solve factoring. The fastest known algorithm takes time that grows like exponentially with the cube root of the number of digits, uh, roughly. Okay, uh, uh, at the very least, the best publicly known algorithm. Okay, and uh, uh, and, and 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 actually, uh, uh, from from the Snowden revelations, there are some indications that even the NSA does not know much better than that. Or if they did, they would be doing something different than uh, it looks like they are. So. Uh, um, so we do not know whether factoring is in P. That is a uh, famous unsolved problem, okay? Uh, but uh, if the answer to a question like this one were yes, there is such a factor, then it is very easy for some wizard to prove that to you. They just show you the factor. And then you know you can just plug that into your computer. Factoring might or might not be hard, but division is certainly uh, uh, easy for a computer, and it just checks the factor. Okay, so that's NP, and then the next uh, really important concept is um, NP hard. So, uh, so imagine that you had like a, a magic box for solving a given computational problem. Okay, then the next question that we ask is now using that box, what other problems could you then solve? You know, like by just using, you ta you, uh, like you could say, which problems are easy relative to this box? Like which ones can I do in polynomial time with the ability to make calls to this magic box, which following Alan Turing in the 1930s, uh, we call an oracle. Okay, so uh, so now uh, if if you have a problem where an oracle that solved that problem for free would make all of the NP problems easy, then we call that problem NP hard. Okay, so NP hard uh, uh, informally means at least as hard as all the problems in NP. Okay, and then uh, NP complete just means the intersection of NP hard with NP itself. Okay, so the NP complete problems are just the maximally hard problems in NP, right? They're the NP problems that are at least as hard as any other NP problems. 
Okay, now just from these abstract definitions, it's not obvious a priori that any NP-hard or NP-complete problems even exist. Okay, so the big discovery in theoretical computer science in the early 1970s that really started this off as its own field in the first place was the discovery that literally thousands of problems of practical importance uh, turn out to be uh, NP-complete. Okay, uh, so um, sort of, you know, given a set of suitcases, can they fit in the trunk of your car? That may be one that you've uh, encountered. Uh, or, you know, just uh, given uh, these constraints, can you, you know, schedule uh, 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 airline flights, you know, that will, uh, you know, uh, uh, whatever, make this much profit and, you know, uh, you know not have... Uh, you know, planes crashing into each other. Uh, uh, Super Mario and Minesweepers are actually known to be NP-complete, uh, if you want the really practical ones, okay? But uh, 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 so lots of problems from, uh, you know, uh, uh, chemistry, uh, condensed matter physics, uh, finance, economics, uh, you know, I, I'm not gonna say every field, I don't know about art history or, you know, but uh, give, it, give it time, okay? So, um, you know, in fact, you know, when you meet like a hard Op con constraint satisfaction problem, like you know, a problem where you have a bunch of possibly uh, conflicting constraints, and you want to find some setting of variables, you know, either discrete or continuous variables that satisfies as many of the constraints as possible, right? You know, the uh, a good rule of thumb is that such a problem will be NP-hard unless it has a good reason not to be. Okay, so, uh, and it's, what this means is that all, you know, all of these, you know, all, what, what on their face might look like totally different problems. You know, are there, here's another example. I give you uh, the graph of who's friends with whom on Facebook. Can you find 500 people who are all friends with each other? Right. That's called the clique problem. Okay, or, uh, uh, you know, I give you a piece of code, you know, can you, you know, uh, uh, verifying that code is free of bugs to, uh, can typically be reduced to an NP-complete problem called a SAT or a satisfiability. Okay, so uh, uh, all of these problems, you know, although they come from, you know, completely different domains, uh, we, uh, NP-completeness tells you that in some sense they're all the same problem. An efficient algorithm for any one of them would give efficient algorithms for all the rest. Okay, so um, uh, by the way, two, wh the, the question of whether two knots are isomorphic, that's one of the ones that no one knows. Okay, so let me, uh, 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 you know, so yeah, so, uh, 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 no, okay, so, so a good example of an NP-complete problem, be like I give you a graph like this, I ask, is there a tour that visits each city exactly once? Okay, so here is such a tour. It's easier when it's highlighted in green, you know, to uh, see that it's there. Okay, well, you know, once it's there, it's easy to uh, uh, see. And then uh, it turns out that any uh, other NP problem, like find the factors of this 2,000 digit number, it is possible to construct a graph such that if someone found a cycle in that graph, Hamilton cycle that visits each vertex exactly once, then from that you could read out the factors of your number. Right? That's what it means for Hamilton cycle to be NP-complete. Okay, so here's a little map of uh, where these things all fit together. Uh, so P, you know, has most of what we would do with our computers on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, NP has a huge amount of what we would like to be able to do with our computers. Uh, you know, and then the NP-complete problems is this sort of giant set at the top of NP. Uh, you know, uh, um, uh, you may have heard of the question of whether P and NP are equal. You may have heard of that as that not having been answered. We'll come, we will come to that. Okay, uh, I wanted to point out also that there are uh, uh, m uh, many interesting problems that are in NP and that are not known either to be in P or to be NP complete. Okay, factoring is a famous example. Uh, graph isomorphism, not isomorphism, uh, problems involving uh, lattices uh, you know, uh, um, in, in, in R to the N, uh, uh, and, and, and uh, 
uh, and a bunch of others, these problems, uh, these intermediate problems, tend to be uh, extremely important for cryptography, uh, also important for quantum computing, as we'll see. Okay, so then uh, uh, the, uh, the quantum generalization of the class P, uh, which we'll, we'll, we'll talk about quantum computing uh, uh, soon, is called BQP, bounded error quantum polynomial time. Okay, I drew it with this wavy border because of course everything quantum is you know spooky and weird. Okay, but this is a uh, this is a class that we know contains P. Uh, we don't know its relationship with NP. Uh, by uh, there's a uh, one of the uh, biggest discoveries I think in. Uh, the history of computer science was, uh, came 25 years ago when Peter Shore discovered that the factoring problem is in BQP. So a quantum computer can efficiently factor numbers uh, and you know, thereby uh, break much of the world's uh, cryptography. Um, we do, as you can see from this picture, we do not currently know if quantum computers can solve NP-complete problems. Okay, and that's one of the questions that will interest us. Okay, so uh, uh, if I had to pick a single scientific question that sort of maximally ties together all the different things that uh, I care about, I think I would pick the question, uh, is there any physical means whatsoever uh, to solve the NP-complete problems or equivalently to solve any NP problem in polynomial time? Okay, or you know, let's say efficiently. Okay, now uh, this, uh, what, what I love is that this is a single question that sort of includes within it at least five different sub-questions. I think, you know, any one of which could, you know, occupy uh, someone for their, their whole career. Uh, uh, so first of all, there's the famous question, uh, does P equal NP? That is, you know, could there just be a polynomial time algorithm running on a conventional computer that just solves all the NP complete problems? Uh, nobody has, uh, uh, has proved that that's impossible, you know. So, so all, already that. Okay, now that's a, you know that's a purely mathematical question. You know, there's an enormous amount to be said about it. Uh, but uh, you know, for me personally, it becomes maybe even more interesting uh, when we bring f uh, some physics into the picture as well. And then we have to confront other questions. But you know, well, well, you know, does nature give us computational resources that might go beyond this mathematical? class P, right? This, uh, uh, so P, you know, you can define it in, in, in many ways. You could define it using Turing machines, which are these things that, you know, Alan Turing invented in 1936. But you could equivalently define the class P in terms of uh, programs and you're written in your favorite programming language, whatever it might be, or uh, cellular automata, okay? Or, you know, just about any model of computation that is uh, discrete, digital, deterministic, is going to give rise to the same class P, right? So it, it has that kind of universality property. Okay, but, you know, who's, who says that nature has to be discrete and uh, deterministic? In fact, we have some indications to the contrary. Okay, so, uh, so this brings us maybe to the next question, uh, which is, you know, uh, systems in nature like to somehow sit in their ground state, you know, their lowest energy state, but, you know, minimizing energy is a perfect example of an N what, what's typically an NP-complete problem. So does, does nature just sort of magically make NP-complete problems easy? You know, uh, um, um, can, uh, can it do things that are just exponentially hard for digital computers? Uh, um, you know, even just in classical physics, okay? And if not in classical physics, well then what about quantum mechanics? And you know, you've surely uh, heard or read something about quantum computing, uh, you know, how does that change the picture, right? Uh, uh, and um, so, you know, I'll, I'll try to uh, sort of sort out fact from fiction. You know, unfortunately, uh, uh, many, many of the popular articles say things about what quantum computers would be able to do that's uh, very, very exciting and appealing and that's wrong. 
Okay, I mean just like uncontroversially so. Okay, so uh, so we'll talk about you know the current understanding of what a quantum computer would be able to do, and then of course there's the question. Well, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, regardless of what they can do, can they be physically realized? You know, can a, a scalable quantum computer actually be built in our world? You know, and that is a question for engineering, but you know maybe even for fundamental physics as well. Uh, um, and uh, we'll say a little about that. And then maybe my favorite question, uh, you know, is quantum computing necessarily the end of the line? You know, or could nature uh, via quantum field theory, via quantum gravity, via some other, you know, yet, you know, uh, physics that we haven't yet thought to incorporate into our models of computation, could that take us even beyond BQP? Right? And so then uh, uh, we're asking just, is there any, you know, whatever the universe does, call it, you know, universe P, you know, does that class contain it? Uh, NP. Okay, so uh, the reason why NP completeness is sort of important to this discussion is that if not for NP completeness, you know, you, you could have imagined a priori that you would just have an enormous zoo of different incomparable hard problems, right? And for each one, you could say, you know, well, can we do it with a classical computer? Can we do it with a quantum computer? But there wouldn't be sort of any interesting general principles, you know, to be, uh, to be found. But, uh, what NP completeness says is that, you know, yeah, there are little sort of isolated villages of, of hardness, but there's also this gigantic metropolis of hardness, right? The, the NP complete problems. And so, you know, so, so, so it really makes sense, at least, you know, uh, 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 as a first pass to sort of, you know, focus on, uh, you know, how high can we get within NP? Can we get all the, all the way up to the NP complete problems? I didn't uh, 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 mention this explicitly before, but there are also many, many computational problems that are not even in the class NP at all. Okay, uh, uh, you know, the halting problem, whether a given computer program halts uh, would be a good example. Um, uh, Three-manifold homeomorphism, uh, something that is not known to be an NP. You know, it, as far as I know, it might or might not be. Okay. So, uh, you know, so there are problems where there aren't even efficient witnesses for a yes answer, but we'll be, uh, we'll be interested in the ones that do have such witnesses. Okay, so, uh, so let me uh, just, uh, what I'm gonna do in the remaining time is just proceed through these questions and make some remarks on each one. Okay, so let's start with the famous question of just does P equal NP? Now you can tell that this is an important question because it's appeared on both The Simpsons, if you squint, and uh, Futurama, uh, many, uh, actually several other TV shows uh, that were less good, okay? and. Um, uh, it's also uh, one of these clay millennium problems, uh, the seven problems where you get a million dollar prize if you solve them, which includes, you know, the Riemann hypothesis, the Yang-Mills mass gap, uh, the Poincaré conjecture, which was solved by Perelman, although he declined the prize, okay, and, 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 and a few others. Uh, my personal opinion is that P versus NP is far and away the most important of the seven. Uh, uh, that's, uh, that's, uh, that's just my unbiased, uh, you know, op opinion. Okay, but uh, you know, I, I, I can give you a couple of arguments, though. One is, you know, you know, a million dollars is chump change, right? Suppose that you would prove p equals np, and and via an algorithm that was actually efficient in practice. Well, then the first thing you could do is make about two hundred billion dollars by just break uh, hacking Bitcoin. Okay, <laughs> that that would be just like step number one in your in your plan for world domination. Okay. Uh, 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 step number two, uh, you could actually uh, solve the other six uh, clay millennium problems <laughs> and pretty much all mathematical problems by just asking your computer, for example, is there a proof of the Riemann hypothesis in some formal language, like ZF set theory, that has at most 100 million symbols, right? And, uh, you know, and, and the whole point is that if such a proof exists, it can be easily checked. And so in a world where P equals NP, you know, it could also be found in polynomial time. 
Okay. So, uh, you know, of course, you know, you'd have to worry about is the algorithm really efficient in practice, but, you know, it would, it would certainly be an, an unbelievable advance towards solving those, you know, uh, uh, hard search problems quickly, which includes uh, a lot of what we try to do in mathematics itself, you know, or, 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 or some formalization thereof. Okay. Um, so if you uh, okay, so so I, I should say that uh, my 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 pers my own belief is that p is not equal to n p. Uh, I like to say that if we were physicists rather than you know computer scientists and mathematicians, we would have just declared that to be a law of nature. Uh, we would have you know given ourselves Nobel prizes for the discovery of the law. You know, and if, if 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 later it turned out that p equal to n p, we would just give ourselves more Nobel prizes <laughs> for the for the for the law's overthrow. Okay. Okay, but you know, okay, you know, the th you know, in, in an interdisciplinary subject like quantum information, you learn that you know uh, people use terms differently. What you know, physicists call laws, we tend to call conjectures, and so forth. Okay, so. Um, uh, I love my, many, many of my best friends are physicists. Okay, <laughs> so, uh, uh, but okay, but uh, um, uh, uh, you know, so that there's an enormous amount to say about you know, uh, you know, if p is not, you know, assuming that indeed p is not equal to n p, which of course hasn't been proven. Why is this question so difficult? Well, you know, it, it's 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 not the only question in, in math where we're pretty sure we can guess the answer, but proving it is, you know, unbelievably difficult, okay? But, you know, we can say a lot in this particular case about uh, what are the barriers, why are the known techniques in logic and combinatorics and, and so forth uh, uh, apparently insufficient to resolve this question? You know, why are new ideas going to be needed? I should mention that some of the, uh, the most m recent ideas for tackling the P versus <laughs> NP problem uh, uh, come from uh, uh, algebraic geometry and representation theory. Uh, it's called the uh, geometric complexity theory program of Keitan Momoli. Okay, I think that you know, in, in in any case, you know, there's going to be you know deep insights from many parts of math that are going to be needed to make progress on these questions. Okay, so if you want the short version, you can read uh, uh, S Stephen Cook's uh, 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 Clay uh, uh, math. Uh, 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 description of the problem, or for the, the more masochistic version, you can read my 122-page survey article on P versus NP. Uh, uh, now, in uh, you know, you can see the title has this question mark over the equal sign. Uh, in citation indices, the question mark was removed, and so the paper just looks like P equals NP by <laughs> Scott Aronson. That would be a, 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 a more exciting one. Okay, so all right, so let me let me uh, uh, just you know suppose that p is not equal to n p and move on to well if that's so then are there physical mechanisms that could nevertheless make you know n p complete problems tractable that could just sort of zero in on the correct solutions without the astronomical amount of time needed for brute force search right you know I don't have to belabor for for you guys that if we had even just a thousand boolean variables than trying you know, every possible setting of them by brute force will you know, we'll, uh, uh, take uh, longer than the age of the universe. Okay, so, uh, so, you know, so th th there are lots of ideas about how you might get around that. You know, one idea dating back to the 60s is, well, why not just take two glass, peg uh, sorry, two glass plates and put some pegs between them in whatever pattern you want and dip that into a tub of soapy water and take it out and then just look at the soap bubbles that form between the pegs. Right now, we expect bubbles to try to uh, uh, reach a, a lowest energy configuration. And you, know, you could hand wave that that means kind of minimizing the total length of bubble connecting these pegs together. Um, OK, but now there, there's, there's a, a paradox or, or, a, or an issue, which is that uh, finding the minimum total length of line segment that could connect a, a, set, a finite set of points in the Euclidean plane, uh, like, like in, in this example here, and where those segments could also meet at intermediate vertices, uh, this has a name. This is called the minimum Steiner tree problem. And this is one of these famous NP-hard problems. 
Right, known to be. Okay, so, um, so, so are we saying that nature can somehow solve it, you know, near instantaneously? That, you know, just by like building some contraption with, you know, um, uh, maybe a hundred million pegs, dipping it in soapy water, you can just let the soap break Bitcoin for you. You know, let the, let the soap, you know, uh, uh, um, you know, solve industrial optimization problems and, you know, you can make a fortune that way. Okay, you know, that seems sort of important plausible to me on its face. But, you know, there was a discussion of that online some time ago, and someone was saying, well, you're just a bunch of academic, uh, you know, uh, academics following a party line. You know, not one of you know that's th uh, that this doesn't work. You know, none of you have tried it out. You know, that was what led to, the, I guess, the one foray into experimental physics of my career. But, uh, you know, <laughs> so I... Yeah, so, so what, I, what I found was that, you know, you, 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 so I, 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 I do uh, recommend to anyone to try it, except if you do, use plexiglass so that you don't cut your hands, okay? And, uh, uh, you know, what, you'll, what I think you'll find is that with three or four or five pegs, you, t you know, you, the bubbles typically will find the optimal configuration that is the minimum Steiner tree. Okay, as you start adding more, six pegs, seven pegs, uh, you can get it to suboptimal configuration. So you, the system can get trapped in local minima, okay? Uh, and in fact, it can even reach uh, uh, configurations that have like a cycle in them, which then proves that they can't be minimal, right? Now, I think that a priori, this is what we should have expected. Uh, after all, if we had a rock and some crevice on a mountainside, such as you may have seen hiking over the weekend, right? Well, that rock could reach a lower potential energy by rolling up first and then rolling down, but it's rarely observed to do that. Okay, so you know, so so you know, this the, the sounds like a banal point, but like every year or so, you will f find uh, popular science articles that say, you know, this or that team has found a way to make NP-complete problems easy. Okay, may, sometimes it's using DNA folding. Uh, you know, as this is every cell in your body, you know, gets you know uh, finds a minimum folding configuration and thereby solves an NP-complete problem. Uh, some you. Know, you know, recently there was a, uh, an idea called mem computing that was supposed to do this as well. Um, I think that every single one of these cases just boils down to the example that I showed before, right? It's, uh, you know, you have systems that can get stuck in local optima and, and it doesn't always work. You know, I mean, okay, admittedly, like I, you know, when I did that experiment, I didn't try every possible brand of soap, but, you know, you know, I sort of think, you know, the, you know, the expectation is, you know, you're not, uh, um, you know, s systems that just roll down a hill, uh, yeah, you know, they, you know, they're not always going to reach the global optimum. Uh, there's no general principle saying that they should. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the, you know if, if, if you cared about something like proving the Riemann hypothesis or breaking Bitcoin, right, then you would have an enormous dimensional and incredibly rugged and complicated landscape of possible solutions, right, with no reason to think that local optimization will get you anywhere close to the right answer. Okay, and that's what people find when they try it in practice. Now, uh, uh, you know, in, in, in some cases, local optimization really does work well. Proteins, in particular, have been favored by natural selection, specifically to uh, fold in an easy and reliable way. Even then, they don't always do it. So prions, which are the agents of uh, mad cow disease, seem to be proteins that just folded into a local optimum that was not the global optimum of the energy. Okay. So, uh, yeah, but, you know, the, the, the shortest answer to all of these claims is like, well, if you were right, why aren't you rich, right? And, you know, one can, especially in the age of, uh, of uh, cryptocurrencies, one can, one can uh, ask that question. Okay, so, all right, so now let's uh, move on to quantum computers. Okay, so, um, you know, you, you knew that was coming at some point, uh, so, so, so do they change the picture? Uh, so, okay, so in order to... Um, 
uh, uh, tell you about this. Uh, I first need like a slide to explain what a quantum computer is. You know, the advantage for this audience is that you know you've been seeing you know not not only quantum mechanics, even quantum field theory. Uh, you know, I mean, I, what what I usually say is that you know qu quantum you know or, or if if any of you uh, uh, haven't seen quantum mechanics, uh, my advice would be that it's it's actually uh, not nearly as hard as you may have been led to believe, especially once you take the physics out of it. Okay, uh, so which is, you know, in quantum information, the way we tend to think about quantum mechanics is as a certain generalization of the rules of probability. And by the way, we typically only care about finite dimensional uh, Hilbert spaces and not about infinite dimensional ones. So right away that like cut 